Hey, deserving listeners, a lot of you have been emailing me and asking me to talk about asexuality. A lot of you actually identify as being asexual, so let's do an episode on asexuality. This is just a short video. I'm going to try to, as briefly as possible, describe it. So what is asexuality? Well, simply put, asexual people are just people who do not want to have sex with other people. It's very simple. They don't want to have sex with other people. It's just a simple little thing like that, not complicated. There's a spectrum. So people on one end of the spectrum are 100% asexual, meaning that they 100% do not want to have sex with other people. And then on the other, other end of the spectrum, you have people who are 100% allosexual, meaning that they want to have sex with other people. So on this end of the spectrum, you have people who absolutely are highly driven to have sex with other people. They love sex. They think about it a lot. And then there's a spectrum, you know? So if you're right in the middle, you're, you know, you're sort of into having sex with other people. You have, you know, you have an okay libido, but you notice that some people have more libido than you and some people have less. And so there's a spectrum from being completely asexual to being completely allosexual. And when we look at the research and we start asking around, it seems that about one or 2% of people around the globe would qualify for the label of asexuality, meaning that they're just not interested in having sex with other people. They're at this end of the spectrum. It's hard to say though, because the research is pretty new and awareness of asexuality is very low. And so there, there's a pretty good chance that a lot of people out there would actually uh, will later claim, oh, I think I'm asexual. Because there's a lot of people right now around the world who notice for themselves that they have no interest in having sex with other people, but they pathologize themselves, they shame themselves, they might try different you know, supplements to try to help them to have a higher libido. And so they don't they think that there's an inner allosexual person that is, you know, they just need to somehow unleash or something. They're trying to find the key to that. And so they don't think of themselves as someone who uh, is not interested in having sex. And what we see is that as people uh, grow up and they search on the internet and they come across this concept of asexuality, that's when they say, oh, so there's a whole group of people <laughs> that are like this. And it totally resonates with me when I read the stories and they'll just be like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I've never been interested in having sex with other people. And why am I trying to force myself to be allosexual when I'm asexual? And so as we raise awareness in, in various societies around the world, I, I'm guessing we're going to see a lot more people coming forward and raising their hand and saying, I too am asexual. At this point, we're looking at about a 1% or 2% of the population. I'm guessing that's going to grow in the future. So when I talk about asexuality, I tend to get the following myths. People will just have this sort of knee-jerk reaction to, uh, if they're not asexual, they'll have this knee-jerk reaction to throw out some explanations as to why someone would be asexual that makes sense to them, given their narrative world. Uh, the first one that I'll mention is sometimes people will say, oh, well, aren't asexual people just abstaining? Aren't they just celibate? like a priest or someone who is saving themselves uh, for marriage? And the answer to that is no. Asexual people are simply just not interested in having sex with other people. And it has nothing to do with celibacy or with uh, you know saving yourself for marriage or abstaining. Presumably, if you're saving yourself for marriage and you're allosexual, you want to have sex with other people, but you're just refraining from doing so. Whereas asexual people do not want to have sex with other people. Another myth that I hear sometimes is people will say, well, you know, they probably haven't had any good sex before. So if, if, that, if that asexual person just had some good sex, then they'd realize that sex is great and they'd want to have sex all the time. And this is a silly myth. This is not true. Uh, in fact, a lot of asexual people will claim that they have had good sex in their life and they still didn't want it. So it's just a simple matter of they're not interested in having sex. Uh, and this is similar to a, you know, saying, well, 
uh, and this was a myth a long time ago, and it might be still around, is that you know a gay person is only gay because they haven't had good heterosexual sex. And we all know that's really silly. A gay person is gay because they're gay, and a hetero person is hetero because they're hetero. So uh, it's not like having good sex on the other you know team, so to speak, is going to pull you over to that team. It doesn't work that way. Another myth that people will throw out is, oh, well, so asexual people, they must be on the autism spectrum, right? Because autistic people don't like to have sex with other people. This is a myth in a number of different ways. Autistic people absolutely like to have sex with other people, and they absolutely have, have libidos. Um, some don't. Uh, there's, a, there's a slight association between... So if, if you are on the autism spectrum, you're slightly more likely to identify as being asexual. But... The vast majority of people who are uh, autistic um, may not identify as asexual, and certainly the vast majority of asexual people are not on the autism spectrum. Another myth is like, oh, well, they must be depressed, right? Because when you're depressed, you, you know, a lot of people lack libido, and so they must be, just be depressed, right? And this is similar to autism. Um, if you're depressed, you are slightly more likely to identify as asexual or to state that you have no libido to have sex with other people. But when when people recover from their depression, that's when we will see whether or not someone is asexual or allosexual. And uh, the vast majority of depressed individuals who recover from depression, they their libido will emerge. So it's it's a, so we say a, a temporary lack of interest in sex, but deep down they're not actually asexual. Having said that, some depressed people might actually be asexual as well. There's 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 no reason why that wouldn't happen. Um, and statistically, again, just to put a fine point on it, the vast majority of people who are asexual are not depressed. They have the same rates of depression in general as, as allosexual people do. Um, and the last myth here worth mentioning, this is a big one, is a lot of people will say, well, they must be survivors of sexual abuse, right? They must have been sexually abused as a child, and that turned them off to sex. Again, this is another myth. Now, having said that, it's absolutely possible if someone was sexually abused as a child that they might develop asexuality later in life, and that might be a factor. But it's, it, it, it's similar to all the other myths I've been talking about. Um, the, uh, there's a slight association, but, but not much. In fact, some research f finds that asexual people have the same rates of childhood sexual abuse as other people do. So you know, there, there's a slight association maybe for some people, but it, it's, it's silly to connect the two strongly. And again, this is another myth that I remember hearing about decades ago about gay people. People would say, oh, well, they're only gay because they were sexually abused as a child. And we all know that's ridiculous. Again, gay people are gay because they're gay. Hetero people are hetero because they're hetero. Bi people are bi because they're bi. Pansexual people are pan because they're pan. And asexual people are asexual because they're asexual. <laughs> um, uh, now, also, another statistical thing to look at is that a third of our population has been sexually abused as a child, you know, somewhere between a fourth and a third. And so if asexuality or if sexual abuse led to asexuality, then a quarter to a third of our population would be asexual, and that's just not the case. So as you can tell, I've been talking about asexuality as a sexual orientation because it is. It's the same as being hetero or bi or pan or um, gay or lesbian. It, asexuality is just one of uh, the you know, sexual orientations that people will uh, identify as. Some people will ask me, well, can it change over time? You know, let's say my 22-year-old daughter identifies as asexual. Is this just a phase? You know, might, might things change over time? And the answer to that is, sure, it, it could change over time, just like any, any sexual orientation can change over time. Uh, there are individuals who will vacillate between hetero and bi and pan and asexual and, you know, being gay. And so there's, there's just a lot of, you know, change over time. It, sexuality can be fluid, absolutely. But in general, it tends to be stable, right? Uh, many uh, heterosexual people tend to remain hetero their entire life. You know, many gay people, bi people, they tend to remain stable over time. And the same goes for asexuality. 
asexual people tend to talk about how they, at a, at a very early age, similar to any, um, any sexual orientation, there, there seems to be precursors of, of noticing that uh, you, you, just, you just notice things about you. And when the dominant culture is hetero, anyone who isn't hetero tends to notice differences about themselves in relation to the dominant culture. And, you know, gay people will say, yeah, when I was young, I just knew there was something about me that was different. Or if you're trans, for example, you just know, well, I just always knew there was just something different about me. And maybe even going back to the age of five or something, you know, uh, sometimes not, but, but oftentimes, yes. Asexual people are the same. A common experience for asexual people in the teen years will be that, you know, when you enter the teen years, there's this uh, sort of cultural obsession on sex and relationships and TV shows, books, um, j- people at school, you know, uh, Twitter. There's just a lot of obsession on sexuality and relationships. And what asexual people will often say is, I noticed that I, you know, did not care about any of that kind of stuff. I didn't care about the sex thing. I, I didn't care if characters on TV shows had sex or not. And I had no idea why everyone was so obsessed with whether, you know, will they or won't they kind of storylines. And I didn't care. In fact, I, whenever I saw sex on TV, I just was like, ugh, this is just not something I want to be looking at. Why is everyone so fascinated with this? And so... At the time, they're just like, well, maybe there's just something or the different about me, or maybe I'm a late bloomer or something. And then over time, years go by, they're like, wait a second, my I'm I'm not blooming at all. I, there's I, I still at 22 have no interest in having sex with other people. And then they go to the internet and they're like, oh, you know, there's a group of people, and they're like, yay, I found my people. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of difference between asexual people in the same way that heterosexual people are not all the same, right? It's, you know, gay people are not all the same. Well, asexual people are not all the same as well. Some asexual people are very interested in romantic uh, relationships and some are not. The people who are 100% not interested in romantic relationships, we sometimes refer to these people as aromantic. So on the other end, we might say there's alloromantic people. I don't know. So some asexual people want to have a spouse, they want to have a partner, they want a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a wife, a husband, you know, a companion for life, and, you know, they want to grow old together and have that romantic attachment, whereas other uh, asexual people have no interest in that kind of relationship. So there's a variance there. Um, Another uh, variable is whether or not people are aesthetically attracted to other people, meaning that some asexual people will see an attractive person and say, that person is sexually attractive or that person is aesthetically pleasing to me. They still don't want to have sex with that person, but they can appreciate the aesthetic looks of, of somebody. Some asexual people do not have that aesthetic attraction to others. Some asexual people are interested in what we call sensual attraction or sensual touch, things like kissing and cuddling, holding hands, hugging, this kind of stuff, where, whether or not it's romantic or not. And uh, some asexual people are not interested in those things. So sometimes people say, oh, you're asexual. That means you don't want to get married. That means you don't like to cuddle. Uh, and that's not true. It, it might be true, but it, it's not necessarily true. Another variable is some asexual people will experience uh, sexual arousal and some people do not, meaning that some asexual people, their heart starts to pound, you know, if, if they come across something sexual or they stimulate themselves somehow or they somehow get stimulated, they will experience sexual arousal just like anyone else. They, have, they get wet, they get a boner, their heart starts to race, their you know, blood goes places, this kind of stuff. Uh, some asexual people experience that in the same way that allosexual people do, and some asexual people don't experience that. Some asexual people, and many actually, are uh, capable of having orgasms. In fact, research shows that asexual people have orgasms just as easily as allosexual people. In fact, I found one study that found that asexual people have orgasms easier than allosexual people. Not sure why, I could make some speculation, but I won't get into that right now. Um, So orgasms are not a problem for most asexual people. 
Having said that, some asexual people have troubles with it, just like some allosexual people have trouble with it. Some asexual people will masturbate and some do not. In fact, research, and it's sort of hard, again, the research is fairly new, so we don't really know for sure, but some research suggests that asexual people masturbate just as much as allosexual people do. Um, and they might even fantasize about other people having sex. But again, they still, just because they masturbate and they might even fantasize about other people having sex, they do not want to have sex with other people. That's, that's a key, you know, those things aren't always the same. Some asexual people even have sex with other people, even though they're not really into it. Research shows that for a lot of asexual people, they are in a relationship, a romantic relationship, maybe even marriage, with an allosexual person. And they will say, I have sex with my partner because I don't want to lose them and I don't want them to live a sexless life. And so uh, many asexual people will have sex uh, for those reasons. There's a lot of other reasons why an asexual person would have sex voluntarily. Also, uh, some asexual people are not entirely asexual. So remember I was talking about that, that spectrum, right? And so at this end of the spectrum, of the asexual side of the spectrum, you have people who are totally asexual, and then you have people who are just sort of asexual, right? You have the 10, the 20, 30 percent mark here. And what we are calling this group on this end of the spectrum, you know, this spectrum over here, we're calling it gray sexual, meaning they're in the gray zone. Also, uh, some people will experience only sexual uh, attraction to other people after they've been attached to someone romantically for 6, 12 months or something. So they meet someone, uh, they're romantically attracted to them. They they fall in love with that person. They have absolutely no interest in, in interest in having sex with that person. But they love them. They cuddle. They go places. They laugh. They have all the infatuation that everyone else would have. And then twelve months down the line, all of a sudden they start to feel this sexual attraction to their partner. And what we call these people are demisexual people. So sometimes what we refer to this spectrum over here is the ACE spectrum. ACE is a short term for asexuality. So we call it the asexuality or the, the asexuality spectrum or the ACE spectrum. Some asexual people are sex positive, whereas some are sex negative. This is another myth. You know, some people will say, well, if you're asexual, you must be very sex negative. You must be very sex shaming. You must be very sexually repressed. And certainly some asexual people are, but many allosexual people are sex negative. So it's, it's the same variable, you know. Some asexual people are sex negative, some are sex positive. Some allosexual people are sex negative, some are sex positive. Now, those are the differences and the variables among people who are asexual. But all asexual people have attachment needs for other people in the same way that everybody else does. Now, we could argue that uh, for everyone, regardless of whether or not they're a asexual or allosexual, because they're psychopathic or something, they don't have a need for attachment. But barring that, asexual people have the same attachment needs that everyone else has. So they need secure attachments, they need love, they need relationships, they need loyalty, they need mutually satisfying relationships, stable relationships in their life. Everyone needs that deeply. We're, it's biological for us. So if an asexual person is romantically inclined, then they will seek a spouse just like anybody else, and they'll fall in love, and it will be just the same as an allosexual person but they're just not interested in having sex. If the asexual person is not romantically inclined, then they tend to see close relationships with friends and family. But these relationships with friends and family are intense for them because, again, everyone needs to have their attachment needs met. And part of the problem with our society is we're set up in our Western society to meet our attachment needs primarily through our spouses. And it's a little bit pathological to expect that we should get all of our attachment needs through our spouses, and that it's always through a sexual relationship in our society. It's always framed that way. And so for asexual people, sometimes due to culture or the way that people tend to have life, their lifestyles, it might be hard for them to s cultivate those kinds of very close relationships that they need. And so we need to, we need to be more flexible about attachment relationships in our society. Also, 
All asexual people experience discrimination, ignorance, marginalization, bias against them, all, you know, all that kind of stuff due to misunderstanding, lack of awareness. And research even shows that uh, for this one study I found, found that people in the United States consider asexual people to be less than human. And they're even more suspicious and more afraid of asexual people than they are of gay, lesbians, bi people. So just, just let that sink in for a second. You know, we all know about our society's disdain and fear and hatred and marginalization towards gay, you know, LGBTQ people. We all know that, right? Well, research has shown that asexual people experience either the same amount of discrimination and marginalization and hatred and all and fear and all that kind of stuff, or they might even experience more of that. And to me, it that's bizarre, but for some people, they they connect sexuality, allosexuality, with being human. And if you don't have allosexuality, if you're not attracted to other people, then they think, well, you must not be human. You must be some sort of alien or a robot or something, and therefore, you know, you're not to be trusted. And I find that perspective to just be just bizarre. <laughs> you know, when when I started talking with people who had no interest in having sex, it was just to me. I mean, I'm not saying I'm superior or anything. I don't know the culture that I'm in. I, I should say. Uh, it tells me that it's fine. You know, people can be who they want to be, and there's nothing to be afraid of. And so we have to change our society. We have to raise awareness. We have to help asexual people to become liberated, so that they can they can come out of the closet if they want to, and not have to worry about problems. We have to set up societies for asexual people so that they can meet each other and support each other, and maybe being in relationships with each other because you know. Uh, two asexual people, both they don't want to have sex with each other, and so therefore they're likely to be more compatible, right? So we, there's just a lot of things that we need to be doing with our society, and we all need to do this together, and we need to liberate asex asexual people, we need to liberate the ace spectrum people, we need to raise awareness and embrace them just like we embrace everybody else, because we all deserve that. We all deserve a good life, and we all deserve to help other people to have a good life. And so let's do it. Let's all work together because we deserve it. We really, really do.